Hi there, my name is Justin Sawyer and this is my special project for Management 6345. Um, over the course of this semester we've learned uh, several leadership theories and different approaches to evaluating leadership um, and I'd like to take the opportunity to apply those theories and those approaches uh, to a specific character for one of my favorite shows. Uh, the show is Scrubs uh, and the character I'll be uh, talking about is Dr. Cox. So first uh, let's start with a uh, background on the series Scrubs. Uh, Scrubs is a, a comedy drama series that takes place at a hospital, a fictional hospital named uh, Sacred Heart. Um, it's uh, told through the eyes of one of the, uh, starts as an intern, becomes a full-time doctor, uh, but his name is John Dorian, or JD. Um, and through JD's adventures and exploits, um, we get to uh, see how the hospital works, see how he interacts with uh, several of the other characters, um, and get to kind of catch a glimpse into that world. Um, and through that world, uh, we get introduced to a character named Dr. Perry Cox. So Dr. Cox is a fictional character played by John C. McGinley. Um, he is the attending physician when the series opens, um, and throughout the course of the show, he becomes the resident residency director and eventually the chief of medicine of Sacred Heart. Um, throughout the series, uh, he starts off as a pretty gruff figure, uh, not very personable, um, a little uh, cruel, a little harsh towards the younger doctors that he's uh, watching over. As we go along the series, he starts to open up a little bit. Um, we start to peek behind the curtain of his personality. We start to see that uh, a man that really cares about uh, his work and saving lives and healing patients, uh, but also a man who's uh, very passionate about the people around him and, and supporting them and encouraging them and developing them. Um, from a leadership trait standpoint, uh, we could say that Dr. Cox is very high in uh, conscientiousness, uh, which can be defined with some dependability and decisiveness. Um, we see this through his character throughout the show. He's constantly making decisions. He's constantly uh, the one that people rely on. Uh, on the negative, negative side of things, um, we do see a little bit of neuroticism in Dr. Cox. He uh, is prone to be depressed at times. Uh, he can be very egotistical, very protective of the image that he's portraying and the image that uh, people see when they think of him. Um, in fact, there's even an episode where uh, after a, a mistake that he made that, that cost a patient his life, um, he goes into this deep uh, depressive cycle and a lot of the other characters come around him and um, encourage him out of that but but through that cycle and through that um, that episode uh, the characters really get to see his um, uh, depth of care and emotion over his job you know one mistake leads to this level of depression um, it's, it's 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 inspiring to the other characters they see that uh, they're moved by it they want him to get better uh, they want him to overcome that uh, but they also want to uh, kind of follow in his steps and, and caring that much about his work and and how he affects the people around him one significant weakness that Dr. Cox has, uh, I would say, is his lack of emotional intelligence. Um, he's very uh, macho man, uh, portrays this persona of uh, someone who's always confident in everything they're doing or angry about something, um, never really feels uh, any other emotions or at least lets them uh, out for others to see. It, it ultimately, I think, hampers a lot of the relationships that he could have formed uh, had he had a better uh, sense of, of his emotional um, reactions and emotional intelligence. If we wanted to look at Dr. Cox from a uh, leadership skills uh, fo focus or approach, um, you could say he's definitely high in technical skills. Um, he's got everything he needs to be a very successful doctor. Um, as he's at the lower levels of management, that attending physician uh, role, um, he's able to lead well by example because of his technical knowledge, because of the um, ability he has to take care of his patients well and um, pass on some of that knowledge to the other doctors. His uh, human skill probably needs a little bit of work. Um, we do start to see it as the series progresses. Um, he starts to uh, confide in some of the other doctors. He stands up for them. Uh, there's a, a episode or event where uh, one of the female doctors is being uh, unfairly criticized in Dr. Cox's view, and so he goes and he punches his boss in the face, um, puts his own uh, career on the line uh, to protect her, to stand up for her. And so you start to see those human aspects uh, come out a little bit more um, as he moves from the attending physician to the residency director, uh, where he's a little more in charge of those doctors, a little more in charge of uh, their career, of their development, 
Um, he kind of becomes a mentor. Um, he, he would begrudgingly say that. Uh, he, he likes to still carry that aloof persona, uh, but we do start to see that human side come out as he progresses up the ladder. Um, one thing I think he definitely lacks, uh, at least initially, is the conceptual skill, um, the idea of the, the skills and the techniques that are needed to keep the hospital afloat and to keep it running smoothly and effectively. Um, he, he doesn't really have those initially. When he gets to that chief of medicine role, he still wants to be patient focused. He still wants to be uh, kind of in the weeds, uh, dealing with patients day to day. And unfortunately, that's not what that position requires. Um, he needs to have uh, a little bit of a, a bird's eye view uh, to see the whole uh, picture and how to best uh, take care of the financial health of the hospital uh, so that it can continue to serve patients, not just uh, one patient that he can serve in that time, uh, but we continue to serve patients for a long time coming. One other uh, approach to leadership that uh, we learned about this semester is the transformational leadership. Um, and it was kind of defined by the four I's, which are uh, idealized influence, um, intellectual stimulation, uh, inspiration and motivation, and individual uh, consideration. And uh, though he goes about it in a little bit of a weird way, uh, you could say that Dr. Cox actually kind of implements this uh, transformational leadership approach. Um, he definitely um, sets a good role model example for the doctors coming behind him. They all want to learn from him. They all want to be like him and, and have the success he has in, in dealing with patients and, and uh, saving lives on a day-to-day -day basis. He definitely challenges uh, those that are coming after him, the younger doctors, uh, specifically the ones he sees promise in. Um, he doesn't really admit that he sees promise, but he does uh, initiate challenges with them to try to stimulate them, to help them grow, uh, to learn new techniques, to, to answer the call, to meet that bar. Um, he definitely has moments where he kind of comes down from that gruff personality and uh, meets these doctors in person, um, in private, and, and gives them that individualized attention and that individualized uh, consideration. Um, and helps speak encouragement uh, that they need, uh, give them pep talks to build up their confidence in the moment when they need it most. And the last one uh, is uh, inspiration and motivation. Um, I think, uh, again, though it's an unorthodox leadership style, uh, it does motivate his uh, reports and the doctors under him to uh, perform at a level where they can uh, earn his attention, earn his um, recognition and praise. It's, it's a little rough, it's a little harsh at times, uh, but I do think ultimately it is successful. Um, all of the doctors that start the show are much, much better doctors by the end of the show. It shows they have uh, development, it shows they, um, they learn, they grew, they challenged themselves, they met uh, the call when expectations were high. They've dealt with the challenges of every day spending in a hospital, uh, serving patients who uh, have different health issues, different health challenges. Um, and they were able to succeed in that. And then um, even further, um, several of them become leaders in their own right. Uh, they take on that residency director role that Dr. Cox moves on from, and you see them being able to lead younger doctors uh, in a similar manner that uh, Dr. Cox led them. And so through his uh, leadership, they're able to not only perform well and, and, and meet the goals and the, the expectations of the team of doctors, uh, but they're also able to develop as uh, future leaders who are then able to turn and, and lead other younger doctors. And so, again, he's uh, not the perfect character. Uh, there's plenty of, of characteristics that uh, you would probably want to avoid um, in your own life as a leader, but uh, you can't argue with the results. Um, lots of people were saved, um, and these doctors grew both as doctors and as leaders uh, under his leadership. So. Uh, if I had to sum it all up, I'd say Dr. Perry Cox is a very successful leader uh, with a very unorthodox style.